In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to enter into the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know 
we do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine and mine know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. The oldest image that we have of Christ is a mosaic in the catacombs in Rome. And that image is of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, carrying the sheep on his shoulders. What a comforting image that was then to those first persecuted Christians, first 300 years of our faith was spent in hiding by the early church. And death was always a possibility, whether persecution by one of the Roman emperors or just the brutality of life in that era. But that idea of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is so beautiful and comforting that we think that whenever we stray, there's our Lord and Savior coming to bring us back home again and carrying us on his shoulders. There was a recent news article about a sheep in Ireland that was lost for over a year. Now, sheep that are specifically bred for wool need to be sheared. And this sheep was lost and became overwhelmed with all of the wool 
that covered it. It was barely able to move. Finally, someone spotted the sheep, and the owner was able to bring it home and to shear it and to free it of that wool that had become such a heavy burden. In this Easter season, we celebrate the fact that Jesus, who loves us, who will bring us safely home on his shoulders, also wants to relieve us of the heaviness of the burdens of our sins. And so, hopefully in the Lenten season, everyone has had an opportunity to go to confession. And if you haven't, but if you've been thinking about it, don't hesitate to go. Because like that lost sheep, we can become so burdened by that great encumbrance for the sheep of wool, for us of our sins. And we need Jesus to remove that burden from us to help us live in the freedom of his children. And so we call to mind today that beautiful image of the Good Shepherd. And we're reminded of that Jesus who laid down his life for us, rose from the dead for us, and seeks to bring us with him to that great kingdom of heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We make our prayers to God our Father in the name of Jesus Christ, who through his resurrection leads us as a good shepherd into the new life of grace. For the Pope, the bishops, and the priests of the church, may they protect their flock in times of danger and serve them with love and fidelity every day of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in government, may they always be aware that they represent the people and defend them from exploitation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from physical or mental disability, may they find inner healing and peace in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have lavished your love on us, and we make our prayers to you as the shepherd of our flock, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and gracious to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peaceful. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, 
who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you the gladness of his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you have, may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. We always say that where there's a need, there's a night. And uh, I think you really see that. You, you see that in this ministry. I started this in memory of my twin brother, Brian. Knowing Father McGivney took care of the homeless in his time, we are doing his work at our time. People have a fear of giving money. So we decided to craft a bag and fit what we could into a one gallon Ziploc bag. It's hard for any of us to change the world. And I don't think the Lord is calling us to change the world, but I think what he's calling us to do is to change our little piece of the world. And I think that's what you see Donna and Walter doing. They're really changing Waterbury and they're improving the lives of the homeless here in Waterbury.